Hi there, welcome once again to the Dukascopy TV studio here in Geneva. I'm Ben Jones. Alongside me to discuss sustainable landscape restoration is Francis Voorhees. Francis, once again, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. No, no problem. Now, in previous interviews, you've discussed sustainability within the oil and gas sector, but as I mentioned, you're here to discuss sustainable landscape restoration. In what way are these two related? Well, increasingly, companies in the oil and gas sector are looking very carefully at how their operations affect the broader landscape in which they're in. One, one of the companies we talked about in, in a previous interview is South Stream Offshore Pipeline. And that company is putting a, a, a gas pipeline from Russia to Bulgaria. And in both the Russian landfall, as they call it, and the Bulgarian landfall, they're taking a very strong e landscape ecosystem approach to how they place their pipeline. In the Russian side, it's a um, vineyard area, it's a wine growing area, and on the Bulgarian side, it's a forested area. And so here you have an oil company, a gas company, delivering a gas product and also paying attention to the landscape. A second example I could give you is Shell and the other companies operating in the Niger Delta in Nigeria, where they are increasingly looking at how they can have a positive impact on the broader landscape. Shell, for example, is, is involved in a very big program in mangrove restoration around its operations through the Delta. So they're not just doing oil and gas, they're doing oil and gas with a landscape footprint perspective. Okay, now what about other areas, specifically areas that aren't interesting for oil, gas and minerals? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'd say one of the big areas is um, sustainable agriculture and looking at landscapes for restoration purposes to, to produce agricultural products. Another area that's also increasingly interesting is landscape restoration for wilderness, for bringing back the wilds. Um, actually, I'm working on a project in Mozambique that's looking at both of those together. It's called Cutada 5, which is Portuguese for hunting concession. And this Cutada 5 is about a 600,000 hectare reserve in which the developers are going to develop about a third of it, 200,000 hectares, as a wildlife restoration project, bring back in wild game that have all been decimated because of poverty and civil unrest, and in another 200,000 hectares or so, do large-scale agricultural restoration. So they're looking at a landscape approach to farming and wilderness that's commercially viable and creates jobs, economic development, and so on. Very, very interesting. Okay, now obviously this project you mentioned is based in Africa. So what about closer to home? Is Europe interested in sustainable landscape restoration? Yes, I think some, especially some of the big companies in the food industry are interested. Um, I, had a, I had a meeting the, uh, earlier this summer with Unilever, and Unilever has a whole sustainable agriculture program. And for a long time, they've been working on certification of commodities, certification of soybean and certification of palm oil and so on. And increasingly, they're starting to say, well, no, the, it's not just about the commodity, it's about the landscape resilience. And so Unilever is very, very keen to evolve its thinking of how it sources agricultural projects from a landscape perspective. Syngenta here in Switzerland, which is an agrochemical industry, also has a very interesting program on promoting healthy landscapes and looking at a landscape approach to agriculture. Um, on the wilderness side, there's something called the European Wilderness Society, headquartered in Austria, which is a wonderful NGO working to bring w wilderness back into European landscapes. Um, wilderness and European landscapes in the context of sustainable agriculture, villages, local communities, and so on. Okay, so with companies like Unilever and Syngenta interested, there's obviously some scope for sustainable landscape restoration to become big business. So what potential is there for investors? I think there's a uh, very big potential in the agriculture sector. I think there's um, uh, an increasing interest in looking at restoring landscapes to deliver an increased agricultural production capacity on our planet. Um, we have an increasing demand for food with growing populations and with rising prosperity. Um, and so investing in landscapes restoration to deliver agricultural products is a clear one. But interestingly, even in the wilderness area, so here in, in the European context, 
um, the European Investment Bank is setting up a new facility called the Natural Capital Finance Facility. It's about a hundred million euro project to actually fund green infrastructure, landscape restoration infrastructure, not just for agriculture, but also for wilderness, for resilience of the landscape with respect to climate change, watershed protection, and so on. So my suspicion is with the increasing population and prosperity of our species, there's going to be increasing opportunities to invest in profitable landscape restoration. Fantastic. Francis, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching. Do make sure you keep clicking back to Dukoscopy TV as we'll be bringing you plenty more updates and exclusive interviews. Bye for now.